This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Freaking.com JJ, you and I uh, went out today to see the trial of Big Mike, who is one of the many activists that have moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. And this particular trial was in reference to an arrest that was made last year. Name and badge number? What's your badge? What? One three? And the arrest was actually made several weeks after the incident. That's that, right. Uh, the crime that he alleged uh, was alleged to have committed. So just a little bit of background for you to bring you up to speed. Uh, essentially, uh, it was during the Liberty Forum, which is a yearly convention that the Free State Project held until this year when they canceled it, unfortunately, due to a variety of factors. But uh, it was during the Liberty Forum in Nashua, New Hampshire, when hundreds of Liberty activists were gathered there. A number of them, probably at least 60 to 100, uh, came from the Liberty Forum to a public park in Nashua to participate in a 420 celebration, which had been going on regularly out in Keene, where we live. It had been going on regularly for several months uh, prior to this. This was the first time it had happened in Nashua. That's right. And I think if you go to freekeen.com and search for Nashua 420, you probably will find the video footage of what happened there. But in essence, the police had some undercover folks. And I recall hearing them saying that they were just on duty as undercover officers driving around the city. So anyway, they make an arrest. Uh, had a, I guess he had some sort of a marijuana cigarette, allegedly, and he was arrested. As they were arresting him, some of the activists decided they were not going to stand for this. And so they went in, well, I guess stood in front of the police cruiser. One person actually ended up sitting down uh, in front of the police cruiser as he was arrested. Uh, so he was arrested on the spot for disorderly conduct, so-called, which is, of course, the police's favorite catch-all charge. If they don't like something you're doing, they'll just charge you with disorderly conduct. Uh, just so that way they can just arrest you for something yeah, and get you right. on the scene. And it was during that arrest that there were some other people. Again, there were probably about three other people that were not arrested at that moment. But several weeks later, at their homes, the police came for them. And it wasn't the Nashua police because the people that were involved weren't living in Nashua. They were living in different areas. So in one case, it was the state cops that came. In another case, it was the Manchester cops that came. Uh, Big Mike, who was on trial today, was arrested at gunpoint. And pulling yeah. out guns and so coming into somebody's house. Well, that'll out teach guns. him. That'll teach him, Mark. So, yeah, at gunpoint, the police basically raid uh, Big Mike's apartment earlier last year, I guess midpoint last year, and arrested him at that point for so-called disorderly conduct. Now, I heard today that he spent time in jail as a result of that, and I don't recall the details. I that. believe he didn't process. You kidnappers have a good day. He did take issue with uh, you know, being arrested and the, the charges and the gunpoint, and I think he didn't process and served, and then they'll I just keep you two in. weeks. Right, they just keep you in as long as possible if you don't uh, go along with their little process and give up information. So they arrest him for this disorderly conduct charge, which is weeks old at this point. Uh, he ends up getting out after whatever happened in jail, and maybe he pro- processed finally after, after a while. He got out. And uh, and then this the trial was scheduled and put off and put off like he kept showing up for trial and they kept rescheduling it for a variety of different reasons. So he puts in a motion to dismiss based on the so-called right to a speedy trial, which is really kind of a joke. I looked at the statute on that today and it's it basically says that the right to a speedy trial will be determined on a case by case basis. <laughs> so they they have this provision that says that uh, if it goes beyond six months for a misdemeanor that you can have a hearing. All of that aside, the trial finally did uh, go off today, and a, a number of us from the Keene area traveled uh, over there, Grafton, Manchester, a bunch of folks. The, in fact, 25 people. I counted 25 people that I was aware of. There were more than 25 people in the courtroom, but there were at least 25 that I knew personally were free staters, liberty activists, people here in New Hampshire who are here to There's get active turnout. for freedom. Definitely. Yeah, it was really impressive. Uh, it was awesome. And so uh, so we showed up maybe a little bit late because we, for whatever reason, we had to wait for some people and, and get out the door. Uh, so we were a little bit late and we missed some of the action uh, that that transpired. Jason Talley was there from CDEvolution.org, the Civil Disobedience Evolution Fund, and he was attempting to record the trial. They had put in a motion to record earlier, like at least a half an hour before the, the trial. I was a pretty good artist, but it's not really... And this particular judge, this district court judge, in the past, I have seen him uh, basically screw around with uh, with cameramen by 
essentially saying that, well, you didn't file the motion soon enough before the trial, so I'm, I'm going to deny your right to record, so-called right, uh, to be the press and to record this ostensibly public trial. Now, he did that in a case where the motion was filed pretty much right before the, the time for the trial. In this case, it was filed a good 30 minutes in advance. And at the very beginning of this, uh, this case, not only did he move Big Mike's case up from third to first on the docket, because Mike wasn't there at the beginning, he was also running slightly late, he moves up the case and also says, tells Jason Talley that he can't record because he has not yet ruled on the motion. And this is one of the reasons why I always, uh, when I'm doing recordings at courthouses, I always put in a notice because I stand on the, and they still treat it like a motion, but for me, it's important to make it clear that I'm noticing you, doing, doing you a favor and letting you know that I'll be recording your ostensibly public trials today, you know, as the press. That's what I do instead of motioning, which is kind of this yeah. begging It's absolutely for ludicrous that uh, a judge would attempt to keep a camera out of the courtroom. I mean, it. I, I don't. I don't even understand why they don't. Why they do it with federal situations? I understand they don't want their courtroom to become a circus. But one camera, two cameras, that's yeah. not a circus. These people are standing still. I mean, what the hell are you doing in that courtroom that you want to hide so badly? Is really with a question that I'd ask. Exactly right, and the term you used, ludicrous is entirely applicable because the rest of the story is incredible. Yeah, it is. The man in the robe refused to rule on the motion that was filed to record the the trial today of Big Mike for disorderly conduct. He refused to rule on it, said he would rule on it during a recess. So, you know, if we take a recess during this trial, we'll just go ahead and I'll go ahead and rule on your motion then. Until then, you can't record. And so Jason Talley from cdevolution.org heroically continued to record. And it's a very brave thing to do. I mean, these are the man in the robe has these men called bailiffs or court security that will do whatever he tells them to. So if he says, arrest that man, contempt of court, they will put that person and they'll put Jason in handcuffs. What happened was just <laughs> bizarre. The one of the court security officers I don't know if he did it on orders of the judge. I wasn't there to see this happen. But one of the court security officers then walks in front of Jason Talley's camera. So I just walked right in as though, you know, I'm supposed to be there, set up my uh, my tripod and set up my camera and just start recording. Uh, the crowd began. Excuse me. Within moments, another court security bur- uh, bureaucrat comes and stands in front of my camera. So you now have two video cameras in operation in this courtroom where the judge has said you're not allowed to record. You've got two video cameras recording, two court security bureaucrats, one standing in front of each camera. That is bizarre. Yes. I've never seen anything like it before. It's like the whole metaphor of the, gu- the camera is the new gun. Well, this is they're, they're there to take that bullet for, yeah, the, for the judge. Uh, for the right. judge. Are you a liberty activist willing to be on the front line against socialism? Freekeen.com would like you to consider moving here to Keene. While Keene may have the largest number of liberty-oriented media outlets in the entire state of New Hampshire, there's still a need for more activists. Can you help them? Visit Freekeen.com to see what's happening. Freekeen.com hooks you up with all the liberty media in town. Join the Keen Liberty Activists and help free the beautiful city of Keene, New Hampshire from the clutches of the government. Freekeen.com